In the last episode I showed you how I cleaned up and divided the dug up dahlia tubers so that they were ready for winter storage. Now in this episode I'm going to show you exactly how I do store them for the winter. Now I need to say at this stage that this is not the only way to do it, it's not the way to do it, it's my way of doing it. Some people choose to store them under the bed, other people store them in the attic, other people put them in the, in the, under the stage and in the greenhouses. I choose to store them in my greenhouse but in a large box. And I cover them in potting compost. Again, some people will use different mediums. Some people will use wood shavings. Other people might use perlite. But I choose to use compost. Also, at the end of the last episode, I showed you how I'd put the pot tubers into the garage to keep on growing for a while to so that they got time to dry out. Well in this episode I'm going to show you how I cut them down and store them too. So it's about time I started putting them away for the for the winter. It got down to below freezing last night. So I covered them up with fleece just to be sure. All the tubers that are cut have now healed up and dried. I'm now getting ready to store these tubers for the winter. I've already built my big box. And I'm now going to line it with cardboard for extra frost protection. So there we are, all lined with cardboard. In addition to providing extra insulation, the cardboard will also absorb any moisture. Firstly, I put a layer of compost on the bottom of the box. This is to try to make sure that the tubers aren't in direct contact with the cardboard, which might draw out the moisture from them. As I said, I've made use of ordinary potting compost. In fact, I've mixed a few different mixtures together to try to provide some balance. And I keep this compost on the moist side, slightly on the moist side anyway, just enough so that when you squeeze it, it, it sticks to your hand. I don't want the compost to be so wet that it rots the tubers, but nor do I want it to be so dry that it draws the moisture out of the tubers, so slightly moist is best. The next job is to put in the first layer of tubers along the bottom of the box. I try to make sure that all the tubers are facing upwards so that if they do start to grow during the late winter the growth goes upwards so that you don't end up with a tangled mess at the bottom of the box. I then cover the first layer of tubers with another layer of compost to cover them up more or less anyway. I continue to fill up the box with a layer of tubers followed by a layer of compost until eventually all the tubers have been put away and are under compost. Once I've finished with the larger field tubers, which I've labelled individually and stored separately, I turn my attention to the dwarf dahlias. I've got quite a few hundred of these and, and it's quite a laborious process to label each individual tuber, so I don't do it, I just store them in a box. One per, ver one per variety and I put them into the big storage box and cover them with compost all in the same box. Finally when all the big tubers and all the dwarf tubers are successfully placed in the box I cover them up with an extra few inches of compost at the top to provide extra insulation. But as you'll see that's not the end of the matter. Once I've talked to you about what I do with the pot tubers I'll come back to the big box of tubers and show you how I finally put them to bed, really to bed, for the winter. It's the 22nd of November and I'm going to take all the tops off the pot tubers now. I'll give the cut ends a few days to dry off and then I'll be putting them inside a box for winter storage. So here's the same box minus all the stalks. Like the rest of the tubers I'm going to overwinter the pot tubers in the greenhouse in a box. This time I'm using a large cardboard box. Now bear in mind that the soil within these pots 
they're still slightly damp although I've dried them off in the greenhouse for the last three or four weeks there is still some moisture in the compost so there's no danger of them drying out over winter I store the pots on laying on the sides doing it that way means that if there is any moisture within either the tubers or within the soil will drain out quite easily once I've made it a complete layer within the box I then cover the pots with a bit of sand I found that sand gets in in between the nooks and crannies between the pots better than compost I fill the box layer by layer until it's full and as you'll see I've had to use a second box because I'd had more than I could actually get in a single box and finally I close the two boxes the next step is to put a cardboard lid on all the tubers that includes the pot tubers as well as the big field tubers that helps provide some extra insulation from the cold and then I cover them with duvets over the years if any member of the family has thrown out an old duvet I've said I'll have that and I've used it every year I put a few layers of duvets now that I've got quite a few so that it builds up quite high but Heather doesn't seem to think it's appropriate for me to use one of her duvet covers still duvet covers aren't really needed because at the very end I put on a couple of pieces of the staging as well as providing yet more insulation that also gives me some space in which to put things over the winter do you know I think I can hear the daily snoring can you You've been watching episode 17 of Jeff and Heather's Dahlia Diary and I'm sure you will have guessed this is the last episode. We hope that you have enjoyed watching our diaries as much as we've enjoyed making them. If you're already a Dahlia grower, we hope we've given you some new ideas. If you're new to Dahlias, we hope we've given you enough information and enthusiasm to have a go next year. Thank you for all the lovely comments you've made over the past 12 months. We'll leave you with some clips of how the garden looked this year. I hope you agree that all our efforts have been worth it.